Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark. Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And friends, you're in the right place if you've got questions and you want answers. Every time I say that, I think of that, uh, what was it, a few, not a few good men. And you get, I don't know, Jack Nicholson and uh, Tom Cruise, I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Anyway, before I get too sidetracked on that, guys, my name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show, and you are in the right place. If you want the data, the information, the tips, the tricks, the strategies, all the information that you need that, so you can go out there and make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. Guys, we do this each week. I am joined, as always, by my lovely producer, Jennifer. Hey, Jen. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. Right back at you. I am excited to be here today. I'm excited to be with you and be on the air. I know it was another a uh, whirlwind uh, news week for uh, real estate and mortgage and interest rates and Federal Reserve and CPI numbers. So I'm excited to dig right in. I think we're going to have a pretty good show for you today. And uh, you heard Jennifer saying good morning there. She is running the board, but also womaning the Anytime Hotline. And if you have questions, call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. You can call or text that number. That is the Anytime Hotline, and Jen will get your questions on the air. And hey, guys, I'm just going to throw this out because we are going to run through a bunch of data this week. And if you want uh, access to that data yourself, check out MrMortgageRadio.com and then scroll down to the Facebook page because I post all of the links to the charts and the articles and the data sets that we use there. I just find it super convenient. And you guys can interact with us on that page too, if you wish, but go to mrmortgageradio.com. The top link is the podcast show. If you ever want to hear this a second time or you miss something, or you want to just dive a little deeper or share it with a friend, you can uh, share mrmortgageradio.com. And that top link is the uh, podcast page where Jen posts the recorded version of the show each week once we're finished doing the show on the air. But anyway, all of the data sets will be in those links below. And the Facebook page is a pretty robust um, source of information. So mrmortgageradio.com or 855-462-7292 is how you interact with us right now while we're on the air. So, hey, I'm going to dive right in. It was another really, really interesting week. And we all saw the CPI numbers that were released earlier in the week. And everybody was jumping up and down. Inflation is over. Inflation is over. The Fed is going to start uh, easing policy and we're moving into um, Never Never Land or the Yellow Brick Road or I don't know. And guys, if you've listened to the show for any length of time, you know I like to stay conservatively in the middle. I don't get overexcited with one report and I don't find doom and gloom with one report either. We really try to dissect everything. But hey, listen, the inflation is still high. We're still at 7.1%, which is historically a high number, but it's less high than it was last month, if that makes sense. We've gone from the 18th floor to the 17th floor, so we're working our way down, but we're still way up there, and if you're afraid of heights, this is uncomfortable, but that's, you know, it's interesting because the, the overall number showed a bit of a downtick in the pace of inflation. So, you know, the building's still on fire. The, f the flames are just not quite as hot, I guess. But when I, when I dug into the data, there were a couple things that jumped out at me. Shelter costs, um, that's one category. So obviously we're in the real estate and mortgage space. So we look at that. That was actually up, um, albeit a small amount. But that category, that bucket, if you will, uh, of um, costs that make up the consumer price index was actually up, as was medical and services, if you pull out energy, so it's services, less energy is the category. Those three numbers were still up month over month. So while the top line number was exciting and got a lot of celebration, I'm remaining cautiously optimistic. I'm trying to look a little bit forward and see where we're going. Um, I know consumer debt, uh, credit card spending is, is continues to increase. And these uh, rate 
hikes that the Fed is making directly impacts the cost of carrying that debt. So I'm kind of watching the consumer behavior moving into uh, Q1 of next year. But hey, nonetheless, an, an encouraging report on the overall environment in the direction that we think things are going. Inflation still growing just at a slower pace. So I don't want to over-celebrate it, but I do want to give it its due. Um, mortgage rates reacted um, nicely on Tuesday. We're firmly in the sixes, low sixes, tickling high fives with some loan programs and some fee structures. And guys, don't forget, you can always buy the rate down too. And buying the rate down from six uh, versus from seven gives you a lot more ground that you can make up and sellers are still definitely participating in that. But uh, anyway, one interesting headline that I read this week was about rental costs. Now we watch housing costs overall because if rents suddenly start coming down and there's a cheaper choice, a lot of people will choose to continue to rent rather than buy if it's that much cheaper to rent. And lately we haven't seen that. We've seen rents continuing to march up. And I had an interesting conversation with a gentleman who manages, um, REIT money and apartment complexes. And in the markets they manage, they're seeing rents pull back. So I was pretty intrigued by that. And I dug into the data and found that uh, median rent nationally actually increased 7.4% in November. And I'll post this article to um, the Facebook page and you can find it at mrmortgageradio.com. But you know, at first I thought, wow, that's totally contrary to the conversation I had with the um, with the REIT manager. But when I dug into it, I found it pretty interesting that, you know, they list 14 of the top the top market areas that were actually seeing a bit of a rent pullback. And Milwaukee, Wisconsin was the largest pullback at 13.1 percent. And then it, you know, jumps down into single digits. The bottom of the list was New Orleans with 0.3 percent pullback in rents. But then the other half of the data set shows that Raleigh, North Carolina is up 21.8%. So I was, wow, that's flying contrary to, you know, the, the conversation I had yesterday, but it really speaks to how specific real estate is. All of this data that we see in these headlines that are released are national average, are national averages and national median numbers. And we really need to dissect what median means. And we're going to do that uh, in, in the next segment of the show, because I think you'll understand how not only having the data, but understanding how to dissect and interpret the data is super important. Because if you were in yesterday's conversation, they're seeing rent decreases in the, um, you know, high single digit rates. And then you see this headline that says rents increased 7.4% median national. I'm like, wow, well, that's quite contrary. But then you go into the data and you see Milwaukee's rent prices in, uh, decreased 13.1%. Uh, but right on the other side of that, Raleigh, North Carolina is up almost 22%. So there's no consistent behavior. And that's why they use averages and medians. And you want to do a better job of dissecting data than averages and medians. If you're trying to make a long-term financial decision for you and your family. And there are a lot of local resources we can share so you can dig into it on a local level. But I just, I want to stress the importance of not dismissing the data, but also not buying into just the headlines because this rental uh, median average report that I'll share to the Facebook page flies right in the face of any logic because <laughs> In one sense, rents are up 7.4, but the, the Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you guys aren't feeling that. And Raleigh, you're on the other end of the spectrum. You're still getting slammed. And I found it interesting to read through this and see that, you know, Miami, San Diego, and Cincinnati, Ohio were all tied at 9.2% rental increases. And honestly, I thought that number was going to be a little bit higher I don't know. I'm glad that the numbers seem to be pulling back in some areas. Uh, I do think we need to get a handle on rent, but that's a byproduct of the overall cost of ownership and not solely the uh, landlord's fault as a lot of people have that default reaction to it. But anyway, we're going to dive into that and so much more on the other side of the break. But you hear the music. You know what that means. That's my cue. We'll be back in two. Sit tight for two minutes on the other side of this break. We'll be back with more of the show. 
Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com www.reallygreatagents.com Here's another five-star review. We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes, I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. Paradise is closer than you think. West Building Contractors can help you create your perfect piece of paradise. They have mastered the art of pavers, hardscapes, summer kitchens, pools, and more. For a free design consultation and quote, visit westbuildingcontractors.com or call 772-284-6994. West Building Contractors offer new construction, luxury additions, and remodels too. That's 772 772- 284-6994 or westbuildingcontractors.com Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com www.moreaboutreverse.com Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, my name is Mark Itell and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show and we are back. Thanks for sticking with us for that short break. I know Jen is over there already getting some questions, so I'm super excited. But if you have questions, you can call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. And as I mentioned before the break, you can always check out MrMortgageRadio.com to find the data that we're referencing. Or, hey, Share the show with somebody. I would certainly appreciate that. We're always out there pied pipering, trying to grow the audience. So please share the show. And you can do that by sharing uh, MrMortgageRadio.com. And yes, that was me in the green tights with the little fedora and the feather out there uh, pied pipering up and down the street trying to find more listeners for the show. But uh, hey, we're super excited that you're listening. And again, questions or comments, 855-462-7292 is how you get them on the air. But hey, before the break, I was talking about the importance of understanding the difference between uh, terms like average and median. And those two um, terms are used quite often when when, uh, digesting data. And trying to make data, trying to make the data digestible to the overall audience. So they take everything and put it in the in the pot, if you will, and turn it on boil and averages and medians start spitting out. But they're very, very different and they can be super, super deceiving. So I'm going to give you a real world example. And median, just like the median in, in the highway, refers to the dead center. So in 11 transactions, you're going to have five that are lower than median, and you're going to have five that are higher than median. So the median is the one in the middle. The average, obviously, is the total of all of them divided by the number of units. So in this example, 11. But I'm going to show you how in a very, very conceivable example, how those numbers can be wildly skewed. So we need 11 home sales to, and this is general numbers. It's not specific to a neighborhood. These aren't all three bedroom, two baths. They're not all single stories. And that's where the numbers can be skewed because they all get thrown into the same hat. So if four properties sold for $350,000, that's a total of 1.4 million. Then the fifth property sold for $400,000. The, the sixth property is at 650000 might even be in a different neighborhood. And then five more properties sold at 800000 
in a, in a completely different neighborhood, but in the same area. So you total all of those up and you have $6,450,000. Well, if you divide that by 11, that gives you an average price of $586,363. Well, guys, what example is even close to that number? We've got 350, 400, 650, and 800. There's, there's not a number close to five. I guess the 650 is probably the closest. But the 650 is also the median. We've got five units lower and five units higher. So I said four at 800,000. I meant five at 800,000 to make it 11 units. But my point is the median home value in that example is $650,000. Well, if you're in the three hundred and fifty dollars or $400,000 range, you've got false hope of what your property's worth. And if you just spent 800000 on one of those other five in the new subdivision, you're not having that $650,000. Well, then if you use the average, you're at 586, it helps nobody's cause. So that's why understanding how the data is accumulated and reported is super, super important. And look at trends, right? You can see which direction things are going. And I use that example of the kids playing in the beach. They're watching the waves and not the tide. And that probably isn't the uh, best strategy if you want to end up right in front of your blanket when you're done playing because these kids got washed down the beach about 100 yards so anyway that's where i was going with that i hope that's helpful i am a very simple guy and i think in pictures and sometimes kids playing in the beach fighting the current is is how i relate things to uh to real estate but hey uh i'm going to throw it over to jen and we're going to get to your questions starting right now hey jen what do we have courtney is asking is an FHA loan the best option for a first-time buyer? If not, can you explain other options? Thank you. Hey, Courtney. Um, I appreciate the question. That is a great question. Um, FHA is a really good option for first-time buyers. You know, best, best is relative, right? I mean, it really comes down to your particular circumstance. And I'm open to a conversation if you are, if you want to call us when we're not on the air, I can walk through your personal uh, scenario with you. Or if you're courageous enough, we'll do it on the air. Just give us a call back at 855-462-7292. But the FHA loan product is not um, only for first-time buyers, but a lot of people think FHA means first-time home something, right? So they just put the two and two together. But what I like about FHA for the first-time buyer is it requires a small down payment of 3.5%. And guys, if you've listened to the show, you know we've got that 100% FHA program for for uh, first-time buyers, which is, you know, that's amazing. That's a great loan program. But um, FHA also allows for a lower credit score than conventional. And then the guidelines are a little more liberal. So you'll hear terms like debt-to-income ratio, and that's your total expenditures, you know, your car payment, your credit cards, your student loans, um, and your housing payment against your income and that number can't exceed a certain percentage of your gross income depending on which loan program that you're using and FHA is quite liberal with that number so because of that a lot of people in that first time buyer category gravitate to the FHA loan now one of the big differences with that versus a conventional loan is conventional has loan programs available with as little as 3% down, so very comparable. But the FHA loan typically has a slightly better interest rate, or lately it has. Both loans, if you borrow more than 80% of the purchase price, are going to require you to carry mortgage insurance. Now, with a conventional loan, once your value reaches a certain number or you pay the principal down to a certain number that your outstanding loan balance represents 78 percent or less of the value of the property you can drop that mortgage insurance Um, with an fha loan that's going to live on live with the loan for the life of the loan that's probably the biggest difference if you were looking purely at apples to apples if you were approved for both and the interest rate was comparable than going the conventional route because of that component, the mortgage insurance component, 
may make more sense for a first time buyer, but I like the FHA loan product for the first time buyer. I like the FHA loan product uh, that goes to 100% a lot for the first time buyer. That one requires a slightly higher credit score of uh, 640. But what's really, really cool about that is you borrow the 96.5%, and then there's a 3.5% grant that lays on top of it to get you to 100%. And it's basically a gift. It doesn't accrue interest, and there is no monthly payment due on the 3.5%. Well, if you sell the property or refi it, it's forgiven. So that's why I, I say it's just almost like a gift. And the seller can contribute up to 6% of the sales price to assist you with your closing costs and associated um, costs of buying that property. So because of that, I'm a big fan of the FHA 100% program. But FHA in general is, is a very, very robust loan product for first-time buyers. But it doesn't have to be first-time buyers, guys. I do like to throw that out there too. Um, you could have owned a property in the past and go out and uh, use an FHA loan. It doesn't. It does not require you to be a first-time buyer. But brilliant, brilliant question. And let me say congratulations for dodging the news bullets and uh, <laughs> going out there and, and looking at making that move as a first-time buyer. One other thing I want to throw out there is there is down payment assistance programs in almost every state that we're on the air in. You know what I'm going to do? I don't have it ready yet, but we'll put together a link where you'll be able to go to Mr. Mortgage Radio and click a link and get the down payment in or the down payment assistance program for your specific county. But for the time being, if you just Google your county and DPA, which is down payment assistance, I'm sure a load of programs will pop up for you. But brilliant question. I appreciate that. You hear the music. You know what that means. That's my cue on the other side of this break. We're going to continue with your questions. So sit tight. We'll be back in two minutes. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. We kept our business above water with credit cards during the pandemic. I'm glad we did, business is better than ever. But I didn't want to be a slave to those credit card payments. I called Mark about the REC loan he advertises. Long story short, we did a REC refinance and paid off everything, even the car. Now we only have the mortgage payment. We're saving a bunch every month. Yes, we are happy to recommend Mark and the Mr. Mortgage team. Paradise is closer than you think. West Building Contractors can help you create your perfect piece of paradise. They have mastered the art of pavers, hardscapes, summer kitchens, pools, and more. For a free design consultation and quote, visit westbuildingcontractors.com or call 772-284-6994. West Building Contractors offer new construction, luxury additions, and remodels too. That's 772-284-6994 or westbuildingcontractors.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we're back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you heard the man, if you've got questions or comments or you just, hey, you might want to call and know what my favorite color is because you're going to buy me something nice for Christmas. I don't know. But hey, questions or comments, 855-462-7292 is the Anytime Hotline. 
And you can call or text that number, 855-462-7292. Jen, my producer, is womaning the Anytime Hotline and doing a brilliant job back there navigating everything because you guys give her a hard time sometimes. But hey, let me throw it over to Jen right now and we'll get another question on the air. Hey, Jen, what do we have? Pam sent this one. My landlord told me he is thinking of selling my house. He said I can do a lease option. How does this work? I haven't talked details with him yet. Any advice? Hey, Pam, that is a great question and a a brilliant opportunity if the math works out correctly. So congrats on that. The way a a lease option typically works is you'll have a predetermined sales price and a predetermined closing date. So let's say most of the time it's either one, two, or three years because oftentimes people will do a lease option because they're trying to get mortgage ready. They might be working on their credit, paying down some debt, or saving a bit of money. But the cool thing with the lease option is typically the structure has you making the monthly payment and a portion of that payment is being counted against the sales price, right? So let's say, I don't, let's just use round numbers. So you're paying $2,000 a month, and this is probably a very um, liberal number, but let's say the landlord's putting $500 a month towards your purchase of that property. So each month when you make your $2,000 mortgage payment, $500 of that is going towards the down payment that you're going to need to make that purchase. So let's play it out the rest of the way and say that you have a $300,000 purchase price, And the option, so you're leasing the property with an option to buy it. The option uh, period is 36 months. So you could make 36 payments, which would mean that, what is that, 36 payments, $18,000 would have been allocated towards your $300,000 purchase. So you have $18,000 towards your down payment already. And hey, if you're using an FHA loan, that's probably enough to get you into the deal and uh, cover your closing costs. So it's an interesting strategy, but basically a lease option is you're leasing the property with the option to buy it and you've already established when you can buy it and you've already established at what price you can buy it. And then you determine what percentage of or what number, what dollar amount of each month's rent goes towards your sales price. That's the typical lease option structure. Um, There are, you know, any number of nuances can be added to it, but that's that's it at, at its core. So I hope that's helpful. If you need more information about that, you said you hadn't talked details with him yet. If you want to deep dive that so you're prepared for the conversation, I'm happy to walk you through it. Just give us a shout, 855-462-7292, and we can schedule a call and I can help you figure all that out. But that's how it works. You're renting the property or leasing the property, I guess, with the option to buy it at a predetermined uh, date and at a predetermined price. And then typically a portion of that rental or lease payment rather that you're making each month will be attributed to a down payment uh, of the purchase. So in that example that we just gave, you'd have uh, $18,000 towards your, your down payment in buying that property in three short years. So brilliant opportunity and congratulations on, on being able to negotiate that. Um, That's, that's a good one. Lease options are a great, uh, great option, especially if you're thinking interest rates might come down in the future, then when you buy, you might buy at uh, with a lower interest rate. So, and portion of that monthly payment is essentially going towards your purchase. So you're not in a typical rental situation where you're just throwing all of that money away each month. So brilliant, brilliant question. Um, I hope that answer helped. Sometimes it's a little more confusing than I intended, but always, if you need more information, please reach out. I'm always happy to help. But hey, Jen, do we have time for another question? Hmm. No name on this one. If I buy a house with my girlfriend and later we break up, how hard is it for one of us to keep the house? Well, now we know why there's no name. (laughs) Right. Meester Anonymous. All right. Well, hey, I get it. So I commend you for at least coming up with a strategy, a worst case scenario strategy, right? So you're not blindly going into this. But to answer your question, you will typically, if you're both on the mortgage, and you're both on the deed, the cleanest way to do it, and what most 
partners, especially if you're in a breakup, are going to want is refinance the other person out of the transaction. So you would do a refinance. The The new mortgage would be either in your name or her name, whoever's going to keep the property. And then if there's any equity, hopefully you can pull enough cash out of the refi to pay them or her rather that portion of her equity or vice versa. If she stays and you go, she might kick you to the curb and decide she wants to keep the house. But that's how it works. A lot of people will tell you you can just um, execute a quit claim deed and take somebody off the property, which is absolutely 100% true. However, if you're both on the mortgage, a quit claim deed does not help at all. You'll both remain on that mortgage until it's fully satisfied, either by paying it off, selling the property and paying it off, or refinancing it. So that's typically what we see happen, and it's not uncommon. You know, you'll go into a scenario with a um, girlfriend or boyfriend and buy a property. And if the relationship doesn't work out, one person may want to keep the property. And that is typically the strategy that's deployed because think about it from the departing, I was going to say spouse, but what do we call each other at that point? Boyfriend, girlfriend, mate, the departing mates um, point of view, she's not going to want to leave and trust you to make that mortgage payment each month because you could harm her credit if you fall behind or vice versa. So quick claim deeding someone off the property does not alleviate them from the uh, debt instrument, which is the mortgage. So th- I hope that answers the question. That was a good one. We get a lot of it, especially when we're talking about uh, friends or boyfriend, girlfriend, or even siblings buying a property together, you know, what the exit strategy is and what the cleanest way to do that is. So I hope that helps, but I appreciate your question. Hey, Jen, do we have another one? Rosie is asking, we're thinking about taking out an equity line so we have some emergency money. What happens if we never use it? Is there a use it or lose it deadline? I love that, Rosie. I'm going to use that in my personal repertoire, the the use it or lose it deadline. (laughs) That's a brilliant question. But to answer your question, usually there's not. And usually there's not any additional fee for not using the equity line. And I like the idea that you have to open the equity line and have it there just in case of emergency. It's a brilliant strategy, but usually there's not a deadline associated with when you need to draw down on it. And and the equity line is a great strategy because typically the bank has, you know, little to no closing costs. Oftentimes the first 10 years of the equity line can be an interest only period where you're borrowing the money and then just paying interest only. So the debt service is low, which gives you a lot of freedom if you're renovating the property. And I don't know, I just, I like that component of it. I don't like the idea of just paying interest for 10 years and then having that balance roll into a 20 year loan. But that's what happens if you don't, if you don't pay it down in that first 10 years, it just becomes a 20 year loan at whatever interest rate of the day is. And there's calculations in the, in your closing paperwork that tell you how they're going to calculate the, the interest rate if you transition to a 20 year loan, but no, usually there's not a use it or lose it strategy, but uh, I like that. I'm going to use that. Use it or lose it. Great question, Rosie. Thank you so much for that. Um, You hear the music. You know what that means. We're going to jump into a short break. On the other side of this break, we're going to keep on rolling through your questions. Sit tight and we'll be right back. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. As a realtor, I have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from, but I prefer to work with Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. In this crazy market, there is no room for error, especially on the mortgage side. Mark's team moves fast, keeps everybody in the loop, and makes things happen. They always give my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process. When you're considering a lender, I encourage you to talk to Mark Itell and the Mr. Mortgage team. 
Paradise is closer than you think. West Building Contractors can help you create your perfect piece of paradise. They have mastered the art of pavers, hardscapes, summer kitchens, pools, and more. For a free design consultation and quote visit westbuildingcontractors.com or call 772-284-6994. West Building Contractors offer new construction, luxury additions and remodels too. That's 772-284-6994 or westbuildingcontractors.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.more about reverse.com to learn more that's www.moreaboutreverse.com www.moreaboutreverse.com welcome back to the mr mortgage show call us now at 855-462-7292 All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And we do this each week right here, same time, same station. And uh, your questions are always my favorite part of the show. And you can get your questions on the air by calling or texting Jen at the Anytime Hotline, which is 855-462-7292. She's standing by right now at 855-462-7292 call or text that is the anytime hotline that made me think of the uh when i was a kid what was that the um the jerry lewis mda telethon we've got operators standing by right now (laughs) anyway call jen and uh tell her i said to call but 855-462-7292 that is a call or text line so if you prefer to text your question you can do that or visit mrmortgageradio.com mrmortgageradio.com If you scroll down, you'll see uh, the Mr. Mortgage link that takes you to the website. There's a contact us box there and you can type your question there, hit submit, and it will come through via email and Jen will read your question on the air. But uh, man, we've had some good questions so far. That was an interesting question about a lease option uh, that we had a bit ago. And I really, really like that opportunity for someone. If the math works, it's a great way to stay in the place secure the price now and build up the down payment that you would need by that portion of your rent each month going towards the down payment. So I really like that strategy, but Hey, let's keep your questions rolling. Jen, do we have anything else? Okay. What do we have? Here's one from Dex. I've been listening to your podcast and heard you talking about the landlord loan and the Burr strategy. How soon can I refi and buy a second property? Hey Dex. Thanks for that, my man. I appreciate that. And uh, if anybody is curious what Dex is talking about, each week when we're finished on the air, we rec- we take the recorded version and post it up to the podcast page. But there's a lot of other other episodes up there as well. I think there's approaching 100 episodes and some daily dose shorts and all kinds of stuff. But go to MrMortgageRadio.com and you'll be that top link will take you to the podcast page. But thanks, Dex, for that. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. But the Burr strategy and the landlord loan go really, really well together. And guys, if you don't know what we're talking about, Burr, B-R-R-R-R. I always sound like a barking seal at the zoo when I do that. But the B stands for buy. The first R is rehab. The second R is rent. The third R is refinance. And you're pulling cash out. And then the the fourth R is repeat the whole process. And the theory behind the Burr strategy is that you buy the first property, you get it repaired if necessary, get it up to its maxim, maximum income producing value. So you're getting the best rents. You've got, you know, freshly painted. It's not in disrepair and you're getting good rents on the property. With a rental property, the more income the property generates each month the more valuable it is. There's an income approach to appraising rental property. So in doing that, you now have a more valuable in theory, right? Than when you bought it property, producing income, maximized cash flow. you refinance it, you pull equity out of it and go do it again. So you're into the first deal out of pocket. And then if the math lines up, right, the Burr strategy can allow you to 
do a cash out refi, buy another property and keep repeating that process and build a rental property portfolio, essentially with just that very first property costing out of pocket money. Now, granted, you know, the appreciation needs to be there and the increase in value needs to be there, but that's the Burr strategy explained. Buy, rehab if necessary, rent, refinance, and repeat. And there are people who are employing that strategy in building impressive portfolios. Now, Dex, to your other, the other portion of your question, or I guess your question, because I kind of went off track exp- explaining Burr to the rest of the listeners who may not know what it is. Um, the landlord loan has a prepayment penalty associated with it, as do most commercial or investment property loans. Even if you have the interest only period, there oftentimes is a prepayment penalty and it can be as much as three years or as little as one year. Now, that being said, if you've got a one year prepayment penalty, then you could do that every year without paying the penalty. You can buy your penalty down in the beginning when you when you first take the loan out, but usually they're going to have a minimum of a one year prepayment penalty. The other way to look at it is if that prepayment penalty is a small enough number that it makes sense. You could just refinance, pay the prepayment penalty and continue that strategy. But I just wanted to make you aware of that, that oftentimes the landlord loan will have a minimum of a one year prepayment penalty. So if your goal is to avoid the prepayment penalty, my answer to your question is you could do that every year. If the math makes sense and you're just going to write that prepayment penalty off as a cost of doing business, then you could do that as as soon as you're ready to. Some of the lenders have a guideline or an overlay that require the the owner to have owned the property for six months before doing the refinance. But brilliant question. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. And again, if you guys want to deep dive Burr, uh, go to mrmortgageradio.com, click that top link. And I think the episode, the most recent Burr strategy episode is... I think it says Burr, baby, it's cold outside or something like that. But uh, check it out and let me know what you think. You can find that at MrMortgageRadio.com. But hey, I'm going to throw it over to Jen and get another question answered here if I can. Hey, Jen, do we have another question? Bonnie is asking, I'm so confused. Do you think home prices are going to keep coming down? I haven't really seen price cuts in my town. Wow. Hey, Bonnie, I hope you had a chance to catch the uh, opening couple segments of the show. If you didn't, go to MrMortgageRadio.com and listen to them again because we talked a lot about how the data can be deceiving and more importantly, real estate is hyper, hyper, hyper local. It's not as simple as price trends on Amazon for a specific product and we're all paying the same price for the same thing. Sadly, real estate doesn't work that way and often the data has a difficult time disseminating the local information because they're reporting national averages and medians. And we explained how wildly different average and median can be using the same subset of housing data. So yeah, you're not alone in confusion. I would look to your local market. I don't know what the answer to that question is. I really don't. Um, I think some markets are going to experience a downturn in uh, pricing. I don't think we're we're he- we're marching to a crash. That's my personal opinion. I've been wrong in life before. I've got a couple of X's that I can show, a couple of X's that would attest to that. But um, I think that you have to look at your local market. You want to look at the supply and demand numbers on a national level. You want to look at jobless numbers. I think as long as people can have a job and they can afford their bills, they're going to continue to pay for their houses. And supply and demand is still controlling pricing. And, you know, there's still fewer homes for sale than historic numbers indicate we should have right now. And demand is definitely cooled with with the interest rate increases of earlier this year. But we're just not seeing enough supply come to the market to consistently push across all markets prices down. So that's a tough question to answer. If you want to shoot me an email or call me off the air and we can talk about your local market, I'm happy to do that, but just be cognizant of that. It's not it's not a national conversation, even though the news presents it as such. And if you want to deep dive some 
some numbers locally, go to reallygreatagents.com and I can get you in touch with an agent who can actually, I'll send you their information so you don't have to worry about being bombarded with phone calls that would have a better handle on your specific local market. Because listen, we just talked about rents and home prices are no different. You know, they use these national numbers and in that opening segment of the show, I talked about November rent numbers were up 7.4%. But then we talked about, I think it was Milwaukee that was down 13%. However, Raleigh, North Carolina was up, you know, 20 some odd percent increase. So because of that, you might be in one of the markets that's holding up well, and you might not see the downturn that, you know, people are anticipating. And guys, you know, as much as if you're a buyer, you want a downturn, right? You're hoping prices go down. If you're a seller, you don't want that to happen. So we need to also be careful not to cloud uh, the data with our with our per- personal uh, perceptions and our personal goals because data is just data. It's not emotional. But hey, guys, you hear the music. We're going to jump into a short break, but sit tight for two minutes because we're going to come right back with more of the show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes, we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. Paradise is closer than you think. West Building Contractors can help you create your perfect piece of paradise. They have mastered the art of pavers, hardscapes, summer kitchens, pools, and more. For a free design consultation and quote visit westbuildingcontractors.com or call 772-284-6994. West Building Contractors offer new construction, luxury additions and remodels too. That's 772-284-6994 or westbuildingcontractors.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. We're back. All right. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And thanks for sitting tight during that break. Hey, right when we were running into that break, I was talking to Bonnie about, you know, where home prices are going. And none of us really know. Um, We all have ideas and we're talking about national trends. And I don't want to discourage you by any means, because I still think there is a ton of opportunity out there. And the reality is we all need a place to live. We need to be looking at our budget, not getting consumed by the headlines because if you can afford to live in your property and you have a job you need housing and i'm not saying go out there and overpay and certainly that's not happening right now we're seeing sellers take less than listing price for their for an offer we're seeing sellers contribute money towards buyers closing costs but to bonnie to answer your question hang in there i know it's super confusing out there double back and check out the first part of the show where we we deep dive the difference between average and median and i think that'll help at least understand how the information can be so wildly confusing out there but i appreciate it and i want to make myself available to you if you need a further discussion around that just give us a give us a call or shoot us an email and I'll jump on the phone with you. But uh, hey, I'm going to throw it over to Jen and see if we can squeeze in another question. Lucy sent a text. 
Is there a website or standard formula to calculate potential rental income on an Airbnb? I am looking for properties now. Hey, Lucy, that's a great question and one we don't get a lot of. It's interesting because, well, first of all, there's not a formula but that I know of at least, but that landlord loan, we are able to fund that on properties that are short-term rentals. And in underwriting, they're reviewing the data that's on Air DNA. So just like, you know, DNA, uh, Air DNA is the website that a lot of people use to evaluate the rental income, historical income for an area, for a zip code, for a city. So I would recommend you check out Air DNA. That would be my best suggestion. As far as a formula, I don't know. This I do know that a lot of the areas differ wildly. You can have one area that's a condo on the beach and they're occupied 26 days a month or 23 days a month because they're they're in the perfect location. And then you can have one place that they're catching 11 or 12 nights a month and that's considered really overperforming for that market. So I would check out Air DNA. I think that would probably be your best bet as far as a starting point. So I appreciate that question. That was a good one. Man, I'm just sitting here recapping mentally some of the questions that you guys threw at us this this week. We've got we had some good ones. We talked about the uh, lease option with the landlord selling the property. I think that was Pam. I'm not sure. And then Mr. Anonymous is buying a house with his girlfriend and already planning for the breakup. How do I get out of this if we buy this house together? Which, you know, I joke about that, but that's a smart move to at least consider what your worst case exit strategies are because you know, buying real estate is a commitment to one another if you buy it together. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. There was some good stuff so far this week. Yeah, we appreciate all your questions and comments. We have so much fun with you. Let's see if we can squeeze in one more question. What do you think, Jen? Ray left a message. I had an FHA loan on my last house. I sold it a few months ago. How long before I can get another FHA loan? I've heard three years. Thanks. Love your show. Hey, Ray, thanks for loving the show. And I've got a great answer for you. Great news. How does right now sound, right? So you can get back-to-back FHA loans. And the three-year thing that you're hearing, that misconception comes from the fact that in the world of underwriting, a first-time buyer is considered someone who has not owned real estate for the last three years. So a lot of people think FHA loan, first time buyers only. That means I have to wait three years so I can regain that underwriting status of a first time buyer. But great news, you can sell a house today with a FHA loan and buy a house tomorrow with another one. So fantastic question, my man. I hope that helps. As always, if you need more information, just call or text 855-462-7292 or shoot us an email and you can find the website at MrMortgageRadio.com. But hey, you hear the music, you know what that means. We're wrapping up another week here on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Hey, Jen, you want to say bye to the folks? Goodbye, Jen. Have a great week. You guys have a great week. But before I let you go, I'm going to ask you for a favor. If you've got any friends or family or coworkers or anybody in your world who's thinking about real estate, they've got questions. Is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? What's the right mortgage program I should use? I'm hoping I can count on you to introduce them to me, introduce them to the team. We would love, love, love to help them. And if at nothing else, we'd love to pick up another listener. So please, please share the show with your friends with your family, with your co-workers, with that guy at the end of the bar. Well, maybe not him. He's pretty ornery if he's the guy at the end of the bar that I'm thinking of. But hey, guys, have an amazing week. If you need us during the week, give us a shout, 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. Or catch us online, MrMortgageRadio.com. Everything is there now, guys. All the data that we reference each week during the show goes up to the Facebook page. There's a link for it right there at Mr. Mortgage Radio, as well as all of the back episodes of the show and the podcast. With that being said, you guys have an amazing week. Jen and I will be back next week right here. Same time, same station.
That's a wrap. Join Mark Itell next week for more thrilling edge of your seat discussions about real estate and mortgages right here on the Mr. Mortgage Show.